guys, we're boondocking in Seattle. Well, not really right now. Actually, I just came in to get a sandwich real quick. I came in to get a sandwich here at this Jack in the Box that's in the heart of downtown, but all next to the trains. Of course, as soon as I start talking, there's a train coming. But I'm not gonna stay here. I'm just in the Jack in the Box parking lot, but look what's right across the street here. It's such an RV friendly city. There's a Class C, an older Dodge, and then another Ford van just living right there. They're dirty, filthy, boarded up windows, duct tape, and they're obviously living there. They obviously stay in these places for weeks and weeks <laughs> and never move until they get a notice and they're forced to move. Uh, Seattle has the same ordinance as many of the other cities here in Washington State where you can't stay parked in one spot for more than 72 hours. That's three days. And they'll put a notice on your window and say you're going to be towed in 24 hours. I guess technically that would be four days. Because after 72 hours, they can put a notice that says you have 24 hours to move your vehicle. That's the way it works. And a lot of people just kind of play, well, <laughs> cat and mouse game of, of moving every, every time they get a notice. I'm going to go over here, closer to this area over here to Boondock for tonight. And try to find a, a safe security. A safe spot to well how do I how do I put this uh, a place where I can sleep tonight but also uh, be able to stay parked tomorrow and be safe and for me that means that there needs to be something open nearby in case the worst possible scenario happens somebody attempts to get into my van and the alarms are blaring and Jack's escapes I want people to know I'm just that's like worse worse that would never ever happen right but that's what I want to go find. So, can we share? Jax, can we share? As in you move? <laughs> share as in you move? Honey, can we share? <laughs> it's like, no, I'm comfortable, Dad. Thanks anyway, though. Nice try. Okay, I'll come back later. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me show you around here a little bit. So my side view where, this, where the doors open is the Goodwill part of Goodwill anyway. Behind me across the street you got a Ford that looks like Tilly. <laughs> then you got a big Class A sitting next to it with a dog inside. Okay. A little farther up here. I'm gonna talk quietly. I don't like to invade people's privacy so I just want to kind of walk by real quick. But you got the truck camper right here and another Class A across the street. Truck camper. You got the Mary Miller van with the AC sticking out the back window, just like mine. This is like a Goodwill distribution center, basically, but it's still a store also. Uh, this little minivan right next to me has back windows all painted up. They're living in that minivan, too. Now, I think somebody's living in this Ford van right here. Very stealth. <clears throat> it's a really old motorhome right there. Very dirty too. And then up here in the last spot up here is a camper van. That's a Dodge camper van. With bright green, that is so tacky. Why would you put bright green blanket in that window? Just use black. So yeah, that's uh, the street where I'm boondocking at tonight and probably staying until right before dark tomorrow. This is a much better neighborhood than where I was at two nights ago. Much better. So tomorrow night there is a Seattle Mariners baseball game, which you can actually see the top of the field right over the Goodwill. That's Safeco Field right there on the other side of Century Link where the Sounders and uh, the Seahawks play. All of this will be filled up tomorrow. Um, the other reason why I'm parking so close to Safeco Field is because I'm gonna see a game. <laughs> it's been, I don't know if I saw a game last year, so it might have been two years since I've actually seen a game at Safeco Field.
my rig doesn't stand out too much. I like it. Hey guys, it's 1, 1.25 a.m. right now, and I've been just messing around with a few things. I brought back out my microphone to try out some more stuff, and um, I don't know. It's kind of frustrating because I really like the stabilizer gimbal thing. I don't like the sound of the motors, although a lot of people don't even notice. I notice it. Some people do notice it. I don't like the sound of the motors really close to where the microphone is on there, so I was like, can I plug it in and have this? Guess what? I can't. The weight of this sticking out the side of it messes with the motor gimbals and makes it uh, it makes it tilt and then respond real quick and then jerk it back. Like It'll just start to droop and then it'll just come back. I was really frustrated about that. That means that there is no way to ever clean up the audio from this. This $260 machine, which I love. Now, <laughs> obviously I could just go back to the old school way of hooking it with the tripod mount that it's on right now, hook it back into this and do this and just try to keep it steady as much as possible. But then why did I spend all that money on making the video so clear with the staple? So I'm, that's, that's, that's what I've been doing in here is just trying to figure out how I'm gonna do it, how, you know, um, so, it's kind of just an ongoing thing here, uh, as I try to figure out what's the best and most easiest, but, well, what's the easiest, most convenient, but also is the best sounding and looking, so, anyway, that's, that's what I do, I just sit here for hours and hours testing stuff, like, um, I couldn't find where the microphone was, so I literally had to record a whole bunch of stuff where I'm holding the camera like this and I'm going, is this the microphone right here? I'm tapping it. Is this the microphone up here? I'm tapping it. And then, you know, I found it eventually, but there's like four holes on the GoPro 4, and I was trying to figure out which one does the audio. You see if I could muffle that or... Yeah. So, anyway, torn. When I was walking around earlier, I don't know if anybody else heard it, but I was watching some of that video and you could hear the classical music playing from Goodwill. And that's that's not just a Seattle thing. That happens downtown Olympia in several locations. Many businesses install outdoor weatherproof speakers that automatically turn on classical music to deter riffraffs and people from congregating thinking this is an awesome spot. Um, the thing is, it doesn't bother me at all. In fact, there's a lot of times where classical music is like really nice to hear, but it's just hilarious to hear sometimes. I'm, I'm sure they do it in other cities too. It's not just a thing here, but, and it works. That's the crazy thing. You'll see people like way down, like, like people that used to congregate in that area. Once they install the classical music deterrent, they'll move way down here away from it and have their little party sessions in different spots away from the music. So. I mean, I think it has a 100% success rate. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that any of those deterrents with playing classical music have worked to get rid of people they don't want outside their business. I have the fan on right now. It kind of deters it. I've got the doors closed and it's way over there and I can still hear the music every once in a while. Which is like, isn't that like a, I mean, I'm surprised the businesses can legally get away with that. Is, you know, isn't there, isn't there an audio curfew or something in the cities? I, I don't know. I don't really care because, like I said, I think it's a it's a passive way to fix some things. I know there's a bunch of people who are probably like, that's just me. What's wrong with homeless people hanging out? And Well, there's nothing really wrong with it except that it, sometimes when large groups of people get together, there'll be a lot of garbage, beer cans, vomit, and other personal belongings like blankets and spare clothes and stuff left behind right in front of the storefront. So that's what I think they're trying to deter here. It looks like it works. And I probably don't say it enough. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for watching my videos day after day all the time. Thank you for staying with me through every up and down of my personal life that is now not personal anymore. It's completely public. Well, 90% public. I don't share every single detail. So thank you for watching and staying watching. I am sorry if I can't respond to everybody. I'm sorry if I don't answer every question that's presented. Um, I also understand that the, the, the average person that has a genuine question or, or has a suggestion or something just naturally expects that, hey, you know, this, this needs to be seen by Eric and he needs to respond to me. I, I, I understand that aspect of it, but I cannot stress enough the fact that I spend too much time on my computer and my phone responding to both private messages on YouTube, private messages on Facebook, 
questions on Facebook, questions on comments, deleting and banning insanely um, terrible graphic comments. <laughs> you know that that's important. It's part of the channel, not censorship, not censoring. You can still have an opinion, but uh, very rude, obnoxious um, comments that are disgusting and disturbing do get do get deleted anyway filtering through that as much as I do I just can't keep up I just can't I sometimes check twice a day on messages and the list just goes it's, it's like it's in the hundreds every 12 hours every 12 hours logging in it's hundreds and I can't even get to them what happens is I, I start at the top and I just kind of go through them and then I get to about 30 of them and that's taken an hour and a half right there and then it's I, I just didn't get through them and then and the bunch get pushed down and then another hundred in 200 come in and it's impossible to keep up with so if it bothers you that I don't respond or answer every single question all I can say is I am sorry um, things have changed it's not like it was uh, uh, back in December of 2013 when I only had 10 subscribers and I could keep up all the time it's just not like that anymore um, I also noticed that it's amazing how some people can just turn on me just because of that, you know? I don't answer your, somebody's question and they feel like they had plenty of nice things to say and they wanted to hear me say thank you at the end of it and I didn't three times in a row and then all of a sudden it just they hit, they hit the boiling point and they're an automatic hater and they're back talking crap about me saying how, you know, I'm a POS because I, I never respond, you know, I mean, I'm the same person. I'm sorry I can't keep up. Uh, nothing's nothing's changed. I'm not big-headed. I still want to be low profile. I honestly, and to tell you the guys the truth, I honestly want to go back to the days when it was just simple. When I could say stuff without having to think, is somebody going to twist that around? You know, I don't know. It's really hard to explain. I really wish I could go back to those days, but then... It is what it is we're here <laughs> and now for well I kind of think it's the big news the, the stuff I really want to share I officially got my first RV sponsorship offer from a legit company it, um, they're out of state but several months ago I put together some letters to a few RV manufacturers and dealers and this is in response to one of those that got buried for like two months and then got responded back and I talked to them on the phone today from Seattle, called them, uh, talked to the person who sent me the email and this is now uh, a legit option is uh, to have me and Jax and this channel, Nomadic Fanatic, sponsored uh, by an RV, either manufacturer or sales company to be put into an RV and they will be my sponsor. They will be mentioned in every single video, except the the conditions uh, didn't really work in this case. Um, so th so this one's officially off the table. I guess that's all I'm saying. But this is awesome news because I mean, look at Gone with the Winds. <laughs> I mean, technically, I have I have surpassed Gone with the Winds. I mean, a lot of us love their channel. They're an adorable couple. They travel with cats. They're always in a brand new RV. <laughs> I mean, I think I've seen them in like six different RVs, um, and they're they're they just got sponsored for a new one when they got into Canada to go up to Alaska. Uh, I love their channel, um, and you know, so if they can do it, I can do it, right? And I and I really think this is an opportunity, um, but I've been real cautious about this, and I think this is the first real, genuine, offer. Although it's really hard to feel people out from a distance. You know, I've had some problems dealing with potential deals in other locations remotely. So, I mean, I'm being careful about it, but this is also just an opportunity to at least share that if anyone viewing this uh, knows someone who's looking to get their, their business name out there and wants to do that, uh, you should send them my information, have them send me an email, and we'll get in touch. But this kind of inspires me to get back on. I'm probably going to spend another hour here online and look at some other Seattle and Northwest RV places and kind of send the same type of inquiry to them. So that's the plan. Okay, I, I'm gonna, I got a Mariners game coming up tomorrow night, and I'm going to film inside Safeco Fields. I will see you guys in a couple days.